Welcome back, guys. It's Chris. From misconceptions about the brain to interesting things you can do with your tongue, here are 10 facts about the human body that you shouldn't believe. Number 10. The Tale of TVs There are many claims about how television can hurt your body. You know what I'm talking about. One of the biggest ones was without a doubt, don't sit too close to the TV because it'll hurt your eyes. How many of you at home have heard this from your parents? Fortunately for all of us, they were wrong. Because sitting close to the television actually won't hurt your eyes. Not unless you remain glued there for hours and days on end, by which time you'd have other things to worry about. Granted, you shouldn't watch TV for extended periods without some sort of break, for that can cause headaches and other such issues. But in regards to getting hurt by being about a foot or two away, well, that's simply not true. Your eyes are actually very strong, and they're made to endure many kinds of stresses. The only exception to this being if you are one who has issues with seizures. This could trigger that, but that's another ailment, one not related to eyesight. Number 9. Rolling your tongue is genetic. Have you ever tried to make a U shape with your tongue? It's harmless fun and 100% safe. However, someone got the idea in their mind that being able to roll one's tongue must be genetic, because not everyone can do it, believe it or not. A geneticist named Alfred Sturtevant was the one who started this whole idea and theorized that if a patient could roll their tongue, then their children could do it too. But then, about 12 years later, a scientist named Philip Matlock did a study that basically disproved this outright. He gathered sets of identical twins of parents who could do this feat and found that multiple sets of them had one of the children unable to roll their tongue. Since the theory was about children being able to mimic what their parents can do and one of them couldn't, this busted the myth. However, despite this proof, many still believe that this U-shaped trick is a fact. Number 8. Things grow after we die A rather morbid myth that is believed is that when we pass on from this life, our body continues to grow. Specifically, after we die, our hair and nails will grow, with some saying that they can grow several inches before they finally stop. I personally have heard this one in the past, and I never questioned it. Weirdly, though, it's not true at all. When you think about it on the basis level, it makes sense why it wouldn't be true. The body grows because it's alive. The body functions allow it to do so. But when we die, all those functions stop, including the ones that control hair and nail growth. When we die, nothing grows. This brings into question how people could believe such a myth. Many think that it's because if a body is exhumed after a long state of decomposing, its hair and nails will appear longer because of how decayed the rest of the body is. If you were to look at the hands, you notice that the skin of the fingers has receded, giving the false appearance of longer nails. This also applies to the face and neck in regards to hair length. Despite these appearances, though, the hair and nails do not grow. Number 7. Gum gets stuck in your body. There are many myths about bubblegum, but the one most repeated is if you eat a piece of bubblegum, you have to spit it out, otherwise it takes 7 years to digest. Another version of this myth is, it'll get stuck in your stomach if you swallow it. A majority of us have heard that from our parents, and not unlike other parental warnings, it was meant to terrify us into doing what they wanted. In practice, though, it's just not accurate. However, like any good myth, there is a certain amount of truth. That truth is that bubblegum is literally indigestible. The contents that make it can truly not be broken down within our digestive tract. In fact, the only thing that can are the sweeteners and other simple byproducts that can be easily sifted out through our digestive process. All the rest? Not so much. All that being said, it doesn't mean it takes 7 years to digest or that it gets stuck in your stomach. Instead, it just runs its course through the body until it goes out of you when you go to the bathroom. For a piece of bubblegum to truly stick in your stomach, it would have to be of such a size and shape to not fit through your intestines, which given the malleable nature of bubblegum would be very hard to do. Number 6. White teeth are the right teeth. Whether in TV or real life, you'll hear people comment about how you need to keep your teeth brushed so you can have that natural white smile, even recommending products to help maintain that perfect white color. There's one problem with those statements, though. Teeth aren't naturally white. They're actually yellowish by nature. 
Think about it. How hard do you have to work at times in order to get your teeth white? Brushing multiple times a day, using mouthwash and more? But if you go without doing it for a couple days, what happens? Your teeth turn yellowish. Many see this as the germs and bacteria reacting with your teeth. And that's not the case, actually. Your teeth are just reverting to their natural color. Number 5. You lose heat through your head the most. Heat loss in the body has been studied quite a bit. And through this, a myth was born that the places that lose heat the most is the head. The studies themselves were done in the 1950s with a group of people exposed to cold temperatures to see where the heat escaped. In doing so, they deduced that the place that lost the most heat was your head. This was not true, though, because in that experiment, they allowed the test subject to cover their bodies except for their head. Since the other parts of the body were retaining heat thanks to the clothing, the head exposed more heat at a faster rate. Further tests would prove that on a human that's exposed on most limbs, only 7% of heat is lost through the head. Your hands and feet lose a lot more when they're exposed to the cold. So as you can see, what you lose via your head is not a lot compared to what you can lose in the rest of your body. Number 4. Double Jointed Have you ever met a person that was flexible to a rather insane degree, like maybe a contortionist? These flexible people have been called all sorts of things over the years, but the biggest one is them being double jointed. The real truth, however, is that this label is very misleading. It insinuates that people are born with extra joints that allow them to go and do these incredible feats, but that's not actually accurate. Hypermobility or joint laxity are the correct terms here for what they can do. They don't have extra bones and joints, instead their bones and joints are unusually flexible. Up to 25% of the human population have this in some form or another. And the best part, it's completely harmless to the body, unless you push it too far naturally. Number 3. Cracking knuckles is bad for your health. Cracking knuckles is one of the things that humans just learn to do on their own, and it spread like wildfire throughout the population until every culture on earth learned about it. Because of how popular it got, various myths grew about the process, one of which was that it caused arthritis in your hand. On one hand, it makes sense because the popping sound makes it seem like you're popping a bone into place, which could lead to arthritis via repetition and wear and tear on the bones and ligaments. But actually, it's just the sound of air being let out of your knuckles via the fluid that greases your joints called synovial fluid. So in truth, it technically doesn't do anything but make a sound. Number 2. You only use 10% of your brain There is a myth about the brain that is so prevalent in our world that everyone simply believed it to be the truth. Mainly, that despite the brain having a lot of power and controlling a lot of things, we only use about 10% of it. Now by we, I do mean each individual human. On a certain level, it makes a kind of sense. A lot of what the brain does is done subconsciously, and we don't actively control it, such as when we breathe or blink without thinking about it, or how we can change emotions on a dime without forcing the emotions. So we don't use that part of the brain or the other centers of the brain that focus on other functions, but that doesn't mean we only use 10% of it. There have been numerous studies that have studied the functions of the brain and how much humans actively use it. But one of the most definitive ones of all came from Mythbusters, where they did extensive tests to see how much the brain worked in certain functions and activities. Mythbuster Tori was put into a machine and was told to recall certain memories, and when he did, 35% of his brain acted all at once. This is because when you do certain activities, such as memory recall, you're activating numerous parts of the brain, which is separated in purpose by several lobes and centers. You're activating the memory recall portion of the brain, the emotions that the memory triggers, and more. Add that all up, and you get more than 10% usage of the brain. Busting the myth. The most ironic thing about this fact may just be that no one is actually sure where it came from. Number 1. Your senses. Pop quiz time. What are your five senses? The answers you've been given throughout school are sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste. You've been taught that you only have these five senses, but that's not true at all. You actually have quite a bit more. So much more that there's actually not a hard number for how many senses the body actually has. Here's some that will prove this for you. You have a sense of balance. You can detect the temperature of a room. You feel pain. Your body reacts to something suddenly. And even just your own movements are a non-typical sense. Now, some people may think that this relates to your other senses, and they would be right in certain aspects. But not all of them do. 
Balance is a great one, because though you are touching the ground, your balance isn't rooted in the ground you're touching. It's within your body, and your brain reacts when you're off balance, but you're not touching your brain either. Another example is temperature. While the heat or cold of a room is touching you, it's not in the grasping or grazing sense. Your body's reacting to it, sometimes subconsciously, which leads to shivering and sweating. Some people estimate there are 20 to 30 different senses in the body. Well, guys, thanks for watching. What myths were you told when you were young? How about you let me know in the comments below? Then be sure to subscribe so I can see you next time on Worldlist.